All right, so what's up, guys? I'm here hanging out with Tony. Are Moore. we starting over? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hit record. <laughs> So it's been a good night so far, guys. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, we've worked with elephant trunk snakes. We worked with yellow anacondas. We've worked with carpet pythons. We fed tilapia fish to carpet pythons. What the fuck? It doesn't happen, dude. Carpet pythons eat fish. They're opportunistic. It's not necessarily a food item. I'm not. I'm not a scientific individual. How did you figure that out? Because I have to buy fish in large numbers, and when you buy something and it dies, you try to figure out how to recycle. I used to have lizards, and that was my recycling method. I don't anymore keep lizards. Turn that area into a patio. Um, so now when I buy, when I first started buying dozens of fish and getting them locally, sometimes you don't get them well transported, so you lose some. So when they started getting lost, I went, oh, I guess I've got a snake that would eat this size rodent. Let's see if you want this. Hey, that took it. Okay. Variety is nice. Let's try it. I'm given mice and rats and pigs and guinea pigs, so why not fish? All right, so we're here in Tony's reptile room. A lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, Tony's been doing anacondas for a long time, carp and pythons, obviously elephant trunk snakes, and uh, just kind of a nice mix. But today, I challenge you. Because he said carpet pythons eat fish. Well, I've never fed carpet python fish, and I want to see how this goes down. That's pretty. Doesn't even want to wrap it though. Like, just doesn't know. Doesn't know what to do with this. I've never actually bought like tong fed them. 
and watched them. As I said, I normally would fill the water dishes, drop them in there, and walk away. Yeah. Wash the Trap it. Winner, winner. There's at least enough evidence that you're going down there. Yeah. All right, so we're going to leave this one in peace just to make sure that this happens. You mess with them when they're in feed mode, and it's kind of a weird thing that they may all of a sudden spook and decide not to eat. So we're going to close this for now. We're going to check it out. And if this works, then we approved that Tony is not a liar and that <laughs> carpet pythons actually will eat tilapia. Eventually, if you have enough. <laughs> and I don't recommend it as your regular source. As you saw, I have a pond in my garage, so it's not inconvenient for me. And I didn't start with live fish. I like, this one's totally oh, going to eat that. Look at her. She's like, yes. Turn on. <laughs> All right, so that's happening. That is a super caramel coastal carpet python eating a tilapia. I'm in touch. What temperature do you keep your water? The elephant trunks? Yeah. Those are at 82 degrees. Okay. So I keep those at 82, 82.5. It's right around where I aim for. 82 degrees is good. It allows just enough uh, ambient swings for winter and summer for me. I run them on a, everything's hooked up to a herbstat. Okay. Steel, steel tip probe. Haven't had any issues so far. Uh, Everything except for the elephant trunks in the garage. That big six foot enclosure, that one's run on a Inkbird, uh, Inkbird thermostats, two thermostats. I've got uh, a few things going on with that one. I put in cooling fans to blow because it's in the garage over the top, provide a breeze over the top of the water if it gets too hot. And then I've got the base is lined with heat tape. And then okay. have heavily insulated with wall insulation, and then double paneled with wood it's wrapped on the outside and on the inside with wood, and then stuffed with uh, foam insulation on the center, and then wrapped with uh, heat tape. Right around, and then there's a space, a little bit of space, and then the uh, plastic tub liner. What I've come to find is stress really is the biggest indicator, the biggest downfall to them. messing with their enclosure and trying to readjust and micro adjust, which is a keeper's nightmare. Right. As snake keepers, we tend to do that. We tend to get something in, something new, and we micro adjust. We read the care sheet. We micro adjust. Oh shit! Something fluctuated. It's not that. Oh shit! Let me readjust. What I found with them: get your setup a little, get your setup going, and leave them alone. Let them be. Um, their biggest thing, as I said, my biggest folk, the biggest thing that I found is the only important factor. The only important factor with them: keep a consistent temperature. They stress. They don't. They 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 stress when it gets too hot, and they stress when it gets too cold. But they've got it. They've got a pretty good window. I mean, now where are they from? They're Indonesian, so they're from Indo. They're uh, Indonesian imports. You're gonna get them from that area. 
so they're they're used to those warm waters that's why you struggle with fish their biggest uh in the hobby their their killer is going to be nobody and admittedly i will say this nobody is going to honestly feed them that's i mean everybody's going to claim they died of, of a white spot they died of sickness that that just means you stressed them out because you didn't give them an environment they were comfortable with now have you ever had an elephant trunk with white spot yes first what's white spot a white spot is a spotting it's uh, a white spotting that typically comes over the body it's a fungal disease that they tend to get i don't think truly it's very well known but i again i'm not scientific i don't follow i'm not in that field but can a fungal disease be related to stress like can those two things i personally coincide absolutely think so absolutely I think it's. I think personally, it's a stress. It's a stress indicator. It shows that the animal stressed. Um, the female inside came to me with white spot. She doesn't really have any signs of it right now. She may still have a little bit of clouding on her eyes, but I don't think she really has any signs of it. She's recovered very well. Um, I don't think the babies ever. Look, the babies really haven't shown it. I think at one point they may have slightly shown it, but not really. And really what it is is some of their scales start to go white, get a, a strange patchiness. If it gets real severe when they shed, those patches will come off and it will basically be exposed bleeding skin. So the scales start to eat away and pull, the, pull off. Damn. That's got to suck to watch. It kind of does, especially when you've got a good size. I mean, I had a man, I had a, an adult that got really stressed and kind of started to do that. And after one shed, it had so uh, with two, with significant size. They have significant scales, significant spots um, peeled off, and had some good size chunks that you can see were bleeding and all of that. Um, in my opinion, that's where the theory or the idea of high brackish or high tannin water comes into play got you everybody's everything you read about the elephant trunk snake says they need high tannins they need dark water that's that to me now is that like a salt water like a lightly salted water is no what you well mean? it's lightly salted heavily tan heavily stained or tea stained as it with with like um, tannins from leaves and things like that so more your brownish water real dark and heavily saturated and then also okay. the, salt, the, the slight salt kit content how do you achieve the dark i've got it from oak leaves or almond leaves i mean um, so you just put a Cut branch with some leaves in it in the with the big tanks those big logs yeah manzanita ghost wood i use large natural pieces i have a local source that i can get all kinds of wood from thankfully found them online and he's been great for every setup i've done thankfully from all kinds of sizes um and those naturally leach a ton of wood or ton of tannins and then continuous additives would be you can use i've used everything from over-the-counter fish product additives for black water contents so your natural your additional additives all the way down to just natural additives the woods um, almond leaves a lot of almond leaves is what I'll do with the almond leaves. Some people will boil them to e extract a lot of that color. I personally will just throw the almond leaves in naturally, let them digest. I leave this, I leave fish in there so they'll naturally eat them. And then again, it provides somewhere to, for them to kind of venture through, explore through, kind of provides that visual look. I have them in my living room, so it's a visual appeal of mine and then at the same time that natural breakdown allows it to kind of cut through them, but they look like sock puppets sock wet sock puppets definitely mm -hmm. heard a few different names for them wet sock puppets probably are my favorite 
I can agree with it, especially when they start yawning and stretching their jaws at night. Um, one thing that I've observed that's been pretty noticed that I've never read anywhere or seen anywhere else, um, and I had one other individual that I know that keeps them that actually contacted me after I pointed it out and they actually witnessed it also, but she, or the other female, the one in the garage, when she was in this tank, that cave that this one's in, she occasionally at night or during the day would come up, grab air, and blow air bubbles to make air pockets in that cave. Oh, no. -uh. And then at night, she wouldn't have to necessarily, or if I was in the tank, she wouldn't have to come up for air. She'd just get the air from the air pocket in that cave that she stored. So instead of coming up to expose herself, she'd just stay in the cave and grab be balled up in there and never have to come out. That's wild. Approximately how long do you, can they hold their breath for? I've never, honestly, and I always, at all the footage and all the times that I literally sit and watch just at night laying in bed, just watch them venturing around the tank, I've always told myself I'm going to start timing how long they come up or how long they stay down for. I can give you a guess, and I would say they'll typically, if necessary, they can stay down for roughly a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes if it's a fight-or-flight situation, but most times, honestly, they come up every few every few minutes, every five to ten minutes. They'll come up for air. Do they ever just rest with their head above water? Occasionally, they will just sit stretched out, laying out, but not often. Um... I have seen that in younger ones and also sick ones. The more, the, the sicker the snake or the more health deteriorated the snake has been in, the more stretched out and exposed and to the surface of the water that typically I find them. Got um, you. So that's not, a, that's not I, what you're looking for. No. You're worried at that anytime point. Anytime I've ever seen, anytime I've ever seen juveniles or any... Um, out of water whatsoever or even seeking to get out of water it was not a good health condition take a little breath real quick recharge so they'll sit there for a second it's not like they're just taking one breath they're yeah. they're, they're going they in and out in size, and out they got good sized lungs um, just because they come up every few minutes doesn't mean that they need to they, okay. as I said in, in a fight or flight situation if they if I'm messing with anything in here they, she's not coming up she'll stay down so you hit some crazy 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 anacondas and uh we had an opportunity to play with those tonight, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, World first, which was cool. Yeah, I'm not big on the social media. Let's do this, but it's kind of cool. The to, world's first. It's kind of cool to have that title of you. Yeah, to say. and I mean, I so what bad. was your world's first? The I produced two of the double visual granite patternless, patternless granite yellow in the color. The first to produced. Dude, so what are we looking at here? Run 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 us through it, man. Alright, we got a few yellow anacondas that we produced this year. It's uh, a lot of pissed off little angry worms. Dad, I don't Dude. Each other's. Okay, so you got a normal possible head. Mom mom and dad were double pot double het. Uh, ow, you little monkey. Um, they're double het, granite and patternless. We actually ended up hitting a few granite patternless. We're patternless granites here. As you can see. Okay, so what's this? This is a patternless granite. No way. Doesn't exactly scream patternless. Yeah, it's kind of a weird name for it, right? I mean, yes, but the patternless. And this is a normal phase yellow anaconda. Um, you can see the pattern right along the back is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. predominant. When you go patternless, it kind of breaks that up and reduces it. So the gotcha. patternless gene in yellow anacondas is more of a reduced pattern gene. And then this is the granite 
gene within the yellow anacondas. Yeah, this is an anaconda. You can see it kind of just blows that solid pattern up. So if you take the reduction and then blow it up, one thing that the yellow, um, that the granite gene does is it actually entices or brings out a lot of yellow. Mm -hmm. So it introduces a lot of high yellow. Patternless gene tends to dull it out, actually, on the yellow anaconda. Almost turns like to, a green. It's like an olive color, almost, most times. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one there. The double head, or the double visual. Mm -hmm. These are, okay, ended up okay. with two of them. And I believe they're the first ones that were produced. Of course, we're going to end up holding on to the doubles. Yeah, these we ended are cool. up with two female granites. We're going to keep those girls also. Awesome. I know. Percent. So nice what's going on over here, man? Careful, she'll come flying at you. She's a lover and a fighter. But Beautiful snake. Yeah, I'm starting to sound like a parrot, but this is another DM exotics. Uh, animal. Oh man. Double head she produced for us this year. Uh, young adult female. So that's mama. This is mama. Wow. She's beautiful. She's not the friendliest. What a great looking snake. Uh, we also don't handle everything all the time. I mean anacondas are known to be a little bit cantankerous so we don't really handle them often. We did. Uh, well, wait, 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 hold on, wait. But what about right now? Oh, we're going to change that, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Brandon wants to play with some anacondas. So. My turn? Yeah. You can play all you want. Game on. Who you want? That one. Oh, of course. Uh, hook the up. hook, I believe, is right along the side of those cages right there. Oh, uh, probably. All right. Got gloves if you want some gloves. Start those on. Nothing against gloves. Honestly, during quick cleanings and feedings, gloves are a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, these are the hides I wanted you to take a look at when you do uh, figure out how you can attach that to the roof for a uh, scrub python. Okay. Those things uh, would work great for them. Now, she has had time to recover um, since giving birth. It's been a few months. She's eating meals. She eats all the time. Oh, well, that's a beautiful Doing snake, wonderful. Dude. She's absolutely beautiful. She's a bit young. Uh, oh, that's a beautiful snake, dude. But wow. They don't get massive. Okay. Not like you're, you think you're green anacondas. They're... Problem with yellows is they've got a bit of a short man's complex, I guess is what people have called it. They've got a little bit of an attitude from time to time, and it's not, as you can see, it's not necessarily an attitude. It's more of a, I've had enough handling, I've had enough being messed with, and I'm going to go ahead and turn around and just give you a kiss. That's the thing, they seem to strike just a bit different. Yeah, the, they don't. They don't. They don't come straight at you. They don't come right at you. They don't give you that. Hey, I'm coming at you. I'm warning you that you're getting too close. They just. Hey, I'm, you're handling me. Hey, you got too close. You got within range, and they'll strike ninety degrees to the left and to the right. Well, they so, don't really seem to want to hang on either. No, you know no. I mean, like, well, they're not. They're definitely not a tree snake. It's I'm a used water to snake. Ar arboreal stuff. You know what I mean? Scrubs, carpets, things like that. And I just, I don't have anything that moves like this. No, you as know, you can see, it's, it's if so you're not mean. supporting the whole body, they're uh, a bit more wanting to move. The moment you start supporting the whole body and get that whole body supported, they kind of slow and calm. Ha ha ha, you missed. <laughs> she is beautiful. She is, uh, she does have a bit of an attitude from time to time. Oh no, she's we, fine. We don't really. She's fine play with them much but the uh beautiful all right you can go back in our opinion it's not really an attitude so much it's just she's you know, what, you just gotta respect feet? it 
No. Sure. Six. No, dude. That tank is absolutely that enclosure not. six foot. Yeah, but that snake went back to this enclosure if I wasn't standing here. I guarantee right. you. I guarantee well, you that's the seven foot snake. We never measure anything, especially in this. So we do a lot of just based on how it's doing. <laughs> that's the seven foot snake. Beautiful. Definitely possible. Where's Tiny? Right in the water dish. That's what I was trying to get out. Alright, so this is Tiny. This Had thing's cool. Tiny since 2006. Got it as a newborn. From East Bay Vivarium. Well, you got a female in here too? There's a young holdback female in there, yeah. Yeah, we occasionally, especially with the anacondas, we occasionally will uh, cohab. Dude, now that's a yellow anaconda. Tiny, dude, you got huge. Tiny's gotten massive, earned retirement. Earned elderly age and earned uh, leave me alone status most of the time. So, Brandon comes over and we always like to mess with her. Him. Sorry. It was sexed three times as a female. And <laughs> Finally, when I sent photos to some to, to the local shop that kept sexing it and told them, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a male when it was breeding, uh, we learned not to to necessarily go with what everybody does. Tiny, you're huge. Tiny used to be used in children's education stuff, too. Really? So used okay. to use them. Careful. Okay. I'm slippery. Sorry. There's a towel. About to get numbed. You can probably... Put the woods. You're wet. <laughs> it's get you dry. I'm gonna get tagged. <laughs> Hi. Tiny. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. It's okay. This is how not to have an old yellow anaconda. Uh, hey. Okay, that's the fan. Yes. Alright, fine, dude. You can go back. You can go back. I'm sorry. We're going. I'm sorry. Tiny's not playing today. It's not I being bad, but. Uh, All right. Not necessarily misbehaving, but not wanting to cooperate. Man, beautiful snake. He enjoys Huge his. Huge snake. Enjoys his water dish. The species is not for everybody. It's really not. No. And they're freaking rad, though. How long have you been keeping the anacondas for? 2006. He was my first. He was the uh, first one we ever we ever picked up. First large, actually, constrictor I ever owned. So did you decide you were going to sell one of them, or are you keeping them both? No. Are you keeping them both? You should keep I them may both. end up sending one to a friend who's been uh, ever since what tiny or ever since I think I produced my first litter. He's wanted some, so I think I may send him one and let him play with it. There you go. Like, hey, you take care of it for me for. A yeah, I was gonna say it better be on breeding lawn because. <laughs> no, it's under the. Uh, here's the contract. This is my animal. Nah, we'll figure. I'll figure it out. I'm not. At the end of the day, I'm not worried about. It's a it cool snake. You'll see it's it in the video. Awesome, awesome animals. Yeah. Um, Definitely check it two out. Two of those. I ended up with some other dream snakes, which are the granite yellow anacondas. I've been wanting those forever. The Lacey Act passed years ago and made it think. Made me uh, kind of killed dreams, cut everything back, and made it think that I wasn't going to get anything other than maybe a pattern list. But uh, thankfully, Dan had some stuff. The moment he produced something, I hit him up. The moment I had any word of it, was able to get some stuff from him, thankfully, again. 
being local has its huge advantages. Yeah. At least when he was local. Stoked to see he retired and he's having a good time. But bummed to see he's gone, especially for the local scene. Yeah. Variety. I'm ex- I'm ex- interested to see how the first couple shows go. Um, this one that's coming up, he'll be at. So it's not going to be any different than normal. In a home show, man. The first one from COVID. We're excited. We got a hotel. We're hanging out. We're doing the Anaheim thing. I'd like to hang out. I haven't hung out at many of the shows in the past. It's going to be a busy couple weeks, man. We got Anaheim. We got Northwest Carpet Fest. I need to start getting involved with us, some stuff like that. Start getting involved yeah. in the reptile stuff some more, some purpin, some stuff like that. A bit more family focused, but. Time it's get hard. Away. Get daddy time. <laughs> it's hard to work, have a family, and get into this whole snake thing, man. It's uh, absolutely. It's, it's time consuming, but it's worth it. Yep. Well, sir, it's always been a pleasure. Love Thanks it. for hanging out. Love it. Love it. Thanks for playing. Hey, we gotta get you in the garage. Get we gotta pull that girl out. We're gonna pull that elephant trunk out tonight. Get her weight. You want to go play with elephant trunk snakes? No, we're pulling her out. I want to get her weight. We're going to go away elephant trunk snakes. From the six foot pond. From the six foot pond. Was the six foot elephant trunk snake? Uh, let's find out. Let's check I, it out. We have a wire. We have a, we have, we have a rope. <laughs> All right. There you go. Wow. That is now special. that's an elephant trunk snake. That's our special girl. She's uh, brought imported as a calico. As a calico? As calico. She's a little jumpy. She doesn't like to be handled. And we don't handle them often. Imported as a calico. I'm assuming due to the intermittent black. Personally looking at like boa morphs it kind of resembles a hypo to me yeah the color or an albino of sorts but again like a t positive any i mean of sorts i'm not experienced with albino and things like that but it resembles more of that than a calico to me no i see the calico being someone that doesn't do much with those specific morphs and genetics until it's proven out she's just a beautifully big elephant trunk snake um. alright guys you made it this far in the video I just want to say thank you and I appreciate your support uh, please check out MoreliaHouse.net uh, if you're not on my Instagram please give me an ad MoreliaHouse on Instagram and a big special thank you to Tony Dwar. That was very cool. I had a lot of fun making this video. A lot of fun hanging out and just talking snakes. So, anyway, thank you guys. Take it easy. We'll see you on the next one.